Hello, Matthews Gatos here. Welcome to Chapter 4, Quadratic Equations. In this video, we're going to be covering how to solve quadratics graphically. So we're going to look at the connection between roots of a quadratic, zeros of a function, and x-intercepts, and how they all relate together. So let's talk about what it means to solve an equation in general. When I'm solving an equation, I'm finding the value of the variable that makes the equation true. It makes it balanced. If I plug it in, the x value in, or the variable that I'm solving into the original equation, the left side will satisfy the right side. They will be equal. Well, graphically, that means I'm finding the x-intercepts, the point at which the graph crosses the x-axis. So my tip is you're going to find the value of x when y equals 0. And you're always going to do that either algebraically or graphically. So a quadratic equation, to refresh your memory, is a second degree equation. Second degree because the highest exponent is a 2. Now remember, the degree of a function tells you the maximum number of solutions for polynomials. So since it's a degree 2, it has a maximum of 2 solutions. When we talk about solving quadratic equations, all of these words are used interchangeably. I could ask you to find the x-intercepts, the roots, the zeros, the solutions, it all means the same thing. So how do we solve a quadratic equation graphically? So we set the equation equal to zero first. Zero because that's the x-axis. So in y1, I'm going to put my equation. In y2, I'm going to put zero, which represents the x-axis. And I want to find the point or points where the function crosses or intersects the x-axis. Now because I'm doing this graphically, I need to include a labeled sketch. And here's what I want to see labeled. I want to see x-intercepts, y-intercepts, and the vertex. Now once you've drawn this beautifully labeled graph, you need to tell me that you know what the solution is. Which one of those points on the graph is the solution? And those are the x-intercepts. So I want you to state your final solution. So let's try an example. So we're going to put this into our calculator and you can pause the video and come back and check to see that you're doing it right as I'm showing you the answers here. So I'm going to put x squared plus x minus 6 into the graphing calculator and I'm going to find these three important points, the vertex, the y-intercept, the x-intercept. Then I'm going to put them all together on one graph and state my solutions. So let's find the vertex. So the vertex, since it opens up, is the minimum point. So in my Calculate menu, I'm choosing the option for minimum. And I can see that the minimum is about negative 1 half and negative 6.3. The second thing I'm going to do is find the y-intercept. Now, I don't necessarily need to do this graphically because I can see if x is 0, y-intercept is that lonely number, negative 6, that doesn't have a variable. But if you want to do it on the graphing calculator, since you've already got your equation in there, what you're going to do is do trace 0. Now, remember, trace is give the calculator an x value. Well, a y-intercept has an x value of 0. Press enter and it gives you the y value that goes with it, which in this case is negative 6. Now I can see on this graph there are two x-intercepts. So make sure that in y2 you graph 0. Because if you don't, you're not going to be able to intersect with anything. You need two equations to intersect. So that's what I did. In y1 I already had my equation, but in y2 I put 0, which is the x-axis. You can see it's graphed in red there. And then I found the two intersection points. So I'm going to put this all together on a labeled graph. So you can see here I have my equation, my x-intercepts, my y-intercept, my vertex. I even put arrows on the end to show these went infinitely in the positive direction. So that is my graph. I now need to state my solution. So remember your solution are your x-intercepts. So the solution to this quadratic is x equals to negative 3 and positive 2. Now I want to look at what happens if you're calculating the x-intercepts and you need to change them into fractions because on our graph I would like to see fraction answers if possible. So I want to show you how you turn x-intercepts from decimals into fractions on the graphing calculator. 
So I have this equation that you also have in your notes. You have all the steps. I just want to show you live how to do this. So here's my equation and I want to go through and find my x-intercept. So I'm going to go second trace into my calculate menu and I'm going to choose option 5 because I have two equations and I want to know where they intersect. Okay, so you can see right now up top I'm on the blue graph, the quadratic. I'm going to press my down arrow to go on the x-axis and I'm just going to, because it's easier to toggle left and right. Okay, so I'm on my, or close to my x-intercept. I'm going to press enter three times. So one, two, and three. So I get this number here as a decimal. And if I want to change it into a fraction, and I actually believe these are backwards on your notes, but that's okay. The process is still the same. I'm going to go out to my main screen. I'm going to press my X value, and this will pull up that X value that I just calculated. So on your notes, it's negative. All I'm going to do is go math, frac, enter. So I get one third, and that would be my X intercept as a fraction. Now let's go back in and do it again. So I'm going to go second, calculate. I'm going to go into option number five, which is intersect press my down arrow and go over to my other one. Press enter, 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 and then I get this number here. So I'm going to take it out onto my screen, my main screen, and do the process again. And I know that the signs on these are, are backwards from what you guys have. I'm just realizing that as I'm doing this question. But the process still works. And there you can see the answer negative four thirds. So that's how you can change your x intercepts into fractions. So, what happens when an x intercept can't turn into a fraction? Okay, as you can see in your notes, I have this function here. I'm going to show you how to calculate the x intercepts. So, second trace into my calculate menu down to intersect, and I'm going to find by pressing the down arrow along my x-axis each of the x-intercepts. So let's go over to the left one first and I'm going to press enter three times. So one, two, and three. So I'm going to follow the same process that I did before. So out onto my main screen, press my x value and enter, and then I'm going to try and change it into a fraction. So I'm going to go math, enter, enter. And you see it can't turn into a fraction. I'm going to tell you what that means in just a minute. Let's check the other one. So chances are if one of them can't turn into a fraction, the other one can't as well. But I'll just verify that. So again into my calculate menu, press intersect, down arrow to be on my x-axis so I don't have to toggle all the way around the quadratic. And then I'll go closer to my other one, press enter three times. And I suspect this one also won't, won't turn into a fraction, but let's just verify that. So I'll press X, pull it up, and math, enter, enter. And there we go. So you can see it can't turn into a fraction. So let's put this together here. Here's what it means. If I can turn an x-intercept into a fraction, that means that my rational, I have a rational solution, which means I have exact values, okay? So you'll see in a question, sometimes I'll ask you, find the exact value solution. That means that I'm looking for a fraction, not a repeating decimal or anything like that. I just want a decimal turned into a fraction or integers, whole number answers, etc. Now, interestingly, what that means is if I have an exact value x-intercept, my quadratic can be factored. Now, if I have, like we did in the last example, an irrational solution, which cannot be turned into a fraction, these answers are approximate. And that's when in the question you'll see, find the approximate solution or round to the nearest tenth or hundredth. That tells you that you have irrational solutions. When you have an irrational x-intercept, that means that that quadratic cannot be factored. And that'll make a lot more sense as we go through and look at the different ways of solving quadratics in this chapter. 
So speaking of solutions, let's look at the number of solutions. We talked about this in the last chapter, but we called them x-intercepts. Well, now you can see that x-intercepts and solutions mean the same thing. So to find the number of solutions, let's look at the graph. So looking at this graph, I can see that there is no x-intercept. So it looks like that would mean there's no solution. And that's partially right. When you have zero x-intercepts, it means you have zero real solutions. Now, I want to be clear on that. I want you guys to use that word real because there are solutions. They're just imaginary solutions. And that sounds like something out of a fairy tale, but there is a whole nother number system called imaginary numbers. We're not going to cover that in this course, but I don't want you to walk away thinking that zero x-intercepts means zero solutions. It means zero real solutions. Okay, let's look at this quadratic and graph it and see what we have. So this one here, oh, I can see it has two x-intercepts. So two x-intercepts means two solutions. And I added the word distinct there, and distinct just means different. So I have two solutions that are different, and that seems like it's a little bit silly to say that they're different solutions, but I want to show you this next one, and it'll make a little bit more sense. So in this one here, if I graph it, I can see I have one x-intercept. Now, when you have one x-intercept, you can say that you have two solutions, they're just equal. And the reason that I have two solutions that are equal is this is actually a perfect square trinomial. So perfect square trinomial factors as 3x minus 4 squared. So you can see there are two factors, which means two solutions, but they're equal solutions. So technically, we'll just say it's one x-intercept, one solution. But I want you to know there's really two. They're just equal. So it wouldn't really make sense for me to say x equals 4 thirds and x equals 4 thirds. I would just say x equals 4 thirds. But I want you to know because it's a quadratic and it has two factors, it's technically two equal solutions. So let's put that all together. Zero x-intercepts mean zero real solutions. One x-intercept means one real solution. And again, remember, those are perfect square trinomials. Two factors, but only one solution. Or I could have two x-intercepts, which means two real and distinct, now you see why I put that word there, solutions. So I just want to end by doing a word problem, solving something graphically. In the last chapter, we were focused all about the vertex. So I want to look at what it means to solve a word problem finding x-intercepts. So we have the manager of a clothing store, and they want to study the effect of raising or lowering dress sales. So basically, kind of what's the, what's the best idea or what's the way to make money or lose money depending on how you set your price. So we have this revenue equation. Ten, uh, revenue is equal to 100 plus 15x minus x squared. And it's going to give the revenue in dollars compared to the price change of the dress in dollars. So we want to know what price change will result in no revenue. Now that seems a little bit odd to say, well, how much do I have to set the dress to make no money? But the reason that I'm doing that is because if I know where or what price is no money, then I know what price I should set it to make money, and I know what price I should not go below because then I would be losing money. So this one here is not going to work with a standard window setting. I already see that because the y-intercept is 100. So my y-value is going up high. So I want to look at setting my window setting. So I just have a tip that I haven't talked to you guys about before as to how to find a window setting. And that's involving the table and finding the turnaround point. So I know because A is negative here, this is a quadratic that opens down. So since it opens down like that, and I know it has a y-intercept up here at 100, there's going to be some point where it turns around, where it's going up, 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 and then it turns around. So I can use the table to kind of help me figure that out. So I can see in the table, right in this area here, I'm only going up by ones, is my turnaround point. 
So I know the highest Y value is going to be about 156. So I'm going to set my Y max above that because I want to see a nice filled up screen of my graph. So I'm going to set my maximum Y value to be 200. I'm going to set my minimum to be zero because I'm looking at where the revenue is zero. And my X value is going to have to be doubled because if it goes up, it also has to come back down. So I know that I want to see, let's say about, let's say that's about 10. I'm going to double it to be about 20. So I'm going to set my maximum X value at 20. Now you don't have to have the same window setting as me. I'm just showing you kind of how I come up with my window setting. So I'm going to put this into my calculator and I'm going to find the important parts of the graph, put it all together and interpret the question. So the first thing that I'm going to do is find my vertex. So there's the window setting I was mentioning. I'm going up to 20. So I went negative 20 to balance it out up by twos and I went up to 200 and I went up by 20s just to kind of space it out nicely. So I have my vertex. 7.5 and 156.25 that in the last chapter is what we would use to find the maximum revenue but we just wanted to find out what price change would result in no revenue which is the x-intercepts so i find my x-intercepts you can see that there are two so x equal to negative 5 and x equal to 20. so i'm going to put that all together on one graph and interpret my answer so putting it all together here's what my graph is going to look at or look like Okay, so remember, no revenue means y equals zero. So this means I would have no revenue here, and I would have no revenue here, which means everything above it is revenue. So in between dropping the price $5 and raising the price $20, in between those values, I'm gonna have revenue, positive revenue. Below here, would be negative revenue, means I'd be losing money. So what that means is I don't wanna drop my price below $5, I don't wanna raise it above $20. But we were asked to find when it was no revenue, so to answer my question, I can say that increasing the price by $20 or decreasing the price by $5 will result in no revenue. So that is solving word problems with graphing. Now, as a math teacher, there's a lot that I do. I'll do algebra, I'll do trig, I'll even do statistics. But to be honest with you, graphing is where I draw the line. Hope this video helped. You can go on to doing the practice questions one to four. I have detailed solutions on D2L and then move on to your textbook questions. And I'll see you for the next one.